everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I've got a 60 minute session I'm doing for a client. This is a follow up session. I'll put links in the description to previous sessions I've done with this client. There's a lot of really good ones. So be sure to check them out. Okay, <laughs> I'm trying to decide, do I give you a little bit of background on the previous session? It's a bit surreal. Um, it's a really good look at what a star seed is all about. And there's a parallel life as a star seed traveler of the universe, seeding another planetary body um, with light codes, um, information. Now this client has a connection with the energy of the sun. So as a star seed is bringing sunlight to even darker parts of the universe, that doesn't mean dark as in uh, chaotic or evil. It can just mean there's less sunlight there, <laughs> okay? Um, but there was a, a timeless event um, a transition that could be defined as a death, but the but that part of the client's soul remained at that in that planetary body, only to be released through the session and brought back <laughs> into this current Earth life um, to be sort of um, brought up to date, expanded um, with the memories um, of where that soul self has been, <laughs> and now we're continuing from there. Okay, um, there was a really interesting angel that had come through through at the end. And um, there's other goals that we've been exploring in other sessions. So I'll just tell you these goals and I'm gonna get started, okay? I know I'm trying to give you a, an introduction of some kind. If you're interested in getting more detail, just go to the description and, and check out those other sessions. Okay, so let us go on to the next session as a continuation from where this one left off. Connecting with the unknown angel. Um, further sunlight within, reconnection. Oh, further sunlight within, reconnection. And onto the six alpha stars and constellations and beyond. Okay. Six alpha stars and constellations. I have a feeling I may need to just relook at those for, for a really quick moment. I've attempted to, um, in previous sessions, I've attempted to pronounce these. I'm not going to try and do it. <laughs> I'm just going to look at the names and then digest the memory of those names, okay? So I'm just going back in time here so I can take a look at all that. Man, there's been so many cool... I mean, we've, get, we've accessed so much interesting information. Ursa Minor, Ursa Major, Draco, Canis Major, Canis Minor... Orion, the alpha stars. <sighs> yeah, this feels important to me. <sighs> Constellations and their alpha stars. This is what humans call this, these things. <laughs> I understand now number five on your list was a full opening of the crown chakra. I feel like we should revisit that. <sighs> okay. I'm going to relax and just let this experience happen, okay? We're going to go take a visit to the sun. That's what we did last time. Let's do this again and then see where it takes us. I'm also putting it out there that we want to connect with this angel. Um, we want to know more about these constellations. And we want to work on opening the crown chakra, full opening of the crown chakra. Oh my goodness. Um, I feel... Uh, I'm standing in a place and the ground is glowing, but it seems to be an actual physical ground. And it has streams of light that are just uh, coursing through this ground and it is glowing. It is, it's uh, colors are kind of like a brown, um, greenish brown, golden yellow, 
Um, it's very pretty and it just it's almost like veins um, in the surface and then the surface is glowing and it feels like a real actual location may not be physical to us but in another dimension it's got physicality to it this has to do with the sun i see you as another being you have kind of an anime appearance to you like an anime character um so you have kind of like uh, your hair shoots up a bit and it's a bit crazy and um, it's like a white blonde and you have some kind of device on your head it goes all the way around your head and it has different symbols on it and the colors of this is um like metallic and then there's um, an orange metal and then some kind of lighter orange metal. The lighter orange metal is what has this is this the shape of the symbols. It's, it's like a really groovy headband. <laughs> I'm not feeling so wobbly. I feel like I'm getting grounded. I'm getting my footing. And from this headband, there's a I'm basically standing inside of a map and the map is spherical around me and it becomes a part of my aura. And I'm downloading the map. And the map is reddish brown in color. This isn't stressful. There's just a need to kind of circulate energy right here in the face around the third eye. We're just circulating energy here. There's more about the sun than this. Believe it or not, where I'm standing, it is a sun space. It doesn't look like what you would think the sun would look like. It's not like a ball of fire. It's, um... It's like a... I mean, it's a place. Like, uh, you can... There's ground here. It's like standing on the earth. But it's glowing. It's glowing circuits of energy. Um, and you can see it. The, the ground is made out of this. Uh, and it's a very... Um, it feels like a central location um, where you recharge your batteries, where you um, get up to date on your mission. I mean, there's going to be different dimensional realities that souls participate in. In this one, it's not like you have uh, full access, like God consciousness access. Um, it's like an incarnate state where you're not um, uh, all-knowing. Uh, you know, you're not like a God consciousness. But you're, but you're more tuned in. You're more tapped into the harmony of the universe. Like a, an animal can be tapped into um, the flow and the energies that are guiding it across the planet um, with its life. Um, you're an incarnate being where you're guided by the flow of the universe um, and you're tapped into it. So you understand where you're being guided next. It isn't a question. I mean, it's really straightforward stuff. <laughs> Why can't it be this straightforward as a human? <laughs> it's like you're f trying to find that vein of understanding and you just you just struggle to find it. But <laughs> that's why you got to get heart centered and then silence yourself and then tap into your heart because your heart is your true vein and connection with the universe. But let's see what it's like for you as this other version of yourself. I mean, you, it's definitely more like a spiritual plane. I don't feel like the risk of dying exists here. I don't feel that relationship with death at all. I feel like I am completely in tune with where I'm guided and I have all the tools that I need and I'm taking these tools with me. I'm still in the experience of recharging my battery. So you right now are recharging your batteries at the central sun is what it's like. And you're being updated on your mission. And you're downloading a map of the universe that is giving you key points to what comes next. I mean, I'm not quite certain how you're working with all this information, 
but a higher dimensional version of you is doing it, but it's sending the information into yourself here as a human being. It may not be completely consciously understood, but you are receiving it in your blood, in your cells, of your body, in your DNA. It all understands it. Your chakras understand it. Your ego probably knows about it. Probably freaked out. <laughs> Still recharging at the sun. All right, I know there's other beings that are here. It's interesting because this space is so interdimensional. It's it's actually a gateway to many, 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 many places. And one of the pieces of information that comes back to me is if you astral travel, you should go astral travel to the sun. Because it's all, it's a gateway to anywhere you want to go. Like there's there's some very special component about um, visiting the sun and um, to go there. It's even like a massive library in a way. It's a massive uh, recharge of your batteries. Um, and it's a gateway to everywhere you want to go. Anywhere and everywhere you want to go. Already you yourself are a gateway, but there's something special about going and visiting the sun. I'm going to say it just in my own life. Just I astral travel to the sun. I am astral traveling to the sun. I, Abby, am going to do it tonight. <laughs> Whether I remember it or not, I went there, okay? <laughs> I'm serious. I'm telling you that's how profound the energy is um, that I'm tapping into. Now, when I mean, what I mean about this being a gateway is I see that you're in your own little, um, I don't know, dressing room kind of thing. Like this is your special little space where you're recharging and, and receiving, but there's no walls. Like I can see forever and it's uh, more and more and more of this like ground that is a living ground. But I notice there's beings all over the place here. So you can alter your... Um, accessibility and the accessibility is changing and there's beings that are coming in and they're I mean they're inconceivable I don't know how to explain this there's there's several different faces they're not of the same race they're of three different races okay one of them has like catfish whiskers and it's like a green skin and it's a very bulbous head and his body's kind of shaped uh, like an upside down L. The other one has kind of a creamish yellow colored skin and it's got tufts that come out the top of his head. Um, it's kind of like hair in a way, but it doesn't, it's more like feathers to me. It's more like a bird like and it's got a feminine energy to it. I can't understand the, the other one. I'm going to say something about the color blue. Whether it is actually blue or not, it uh, expresses blue energy. This female bird, um, she doesn't look like a bird, but I think the best way to define her is bird-like, okay? <laughs> it's the best way I could translate her. It's almost like she wants to say a lot, but she gets a little bit lost um, in her voice. So really, she's just like, like kind of giggling it, like hee 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 hee. That's what she sounds like. That's what she sounds like hee 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 like that. <laughs> that she's trying to tell you something, but she's uh, I don't know. Like this is how she's telling it to you, but um, she's happy. She's not laughing. Just so you know, sounds kind of like high pitched laughter. You aren't um, speaking to them yet. You literally are like a cold shoulder, but there's no such thing as a cold shoulder here. Um, you just uh, haven't, it, nothing has sparked inside of you to say it is time for me to acknowledge them. You're still um, focusing on what it is you're doing. I mean, you're very in tune with your astral connection to the universe, even as in tune and in sync to um just because you're standing there doesn't mean I'm going to turn to acknowledge you. <laughs> Even if you're excited to see me, I will not turn to acknowledge you because the universe and my calling and my connection with the universe has not um, inspired me to shift away from the connection of what I'm focusing on right now. And so it is essential that you remain focused, 
no matter what. There's no such thing as a distraction here. The human, yes, in the astral experience, no. You're extremely tapped in to your divine time. There's, um, there's another calling for you, and it is at a much higher dimension than this one. It's uh, even brighter, and it's more um, bright orange and uh, bright yellow colors, and it's almost like they're glowing um, in between. They're, they're like, uh, again, like veins glowing in between black. And I don't know if the black is light as well, like really bright light that it just looks black. Black is a very unique color. It doesn't mean evil or dark um, all the time. It can mean extraordinary light as well. You're not ready to go to that higher dimension yet. You're still working on this recharge. I wish I could speed up the process. I can't force it to be done yet, but um, I meant to help you to see into this event um, and this timeline that's going on here. You aren't shifting, but you almost are ready. It's like that last, it's like that, that moment that you just kind of linger on. And it's like looking off into the distance and knowing that um, the gears are shifting and it is time now for you to face the next thing. And you're kind of holding on to a second, actually. You're lingering in a second and you can do that here at the sun. Like you can, you can uh, linger in a second and turn it into 10 years if you want to. And a part of your heart needs to do that. Just like taking a second and just just giving yourself more time in this moment of I just want one last look. That's what it's like. I tell you that you know it's time. Let it go. You can go back to that look anytime you want. It's time for you to acknowledge now to face your path to face the next thing you tell me that it there's something holding you back something unresolved and that's what you're you're looking for you're recharging and refreshing here but there's some part of yourself that needs to be um resolved something needs to be resolved so you're going to stay in that moment until that resolve takes place and we can go back in time i mean we you can go to any version of time you want but it's like something has to just stop for a moment and you're going to linger in this moment until that resolve takes place so just give me a minute to listen to the frequency and then i can follow it and find out what this is about Yeah, okay. I'm going to have to just be you for a moment. I, I'm literally, um, I'm just tapping on it here. It's like a piano key. It's like the, the strings that are in the piano. One of them is not quite right. And it's, uh, it's too tight. So I'm just tapping on it here. And now I'm just literally rubbing it to relax it down. And I say, what is wrong? It's up the human. It's your, it's something in your life that is causing this. And it reminds me of human emotion. And it's a venting of anger. <laughs> uh, and it also has to do with ego as well. I was telling you, ego would know about this. And ego probably doesn't like it. So... Okay, it's a sour puss. It's literally, it's it's acting like a, it's a sour warhead that's like a bluish color and it's got a pouty face on it and it's like, <clears throat> <clears throat> it's like really ridiculous and it's a little freaking crybaby. That is ego right there. <laughs> and the reason why ego is acting like this is because it gets overwhelmed when it is, Asked to go beyond what is your day-to-day -day rhythm and routine. 
when you are having to excel beyond um, what you are in the flow with as your day to day, it is so hard on your ego. That's why it's very hard to, I am going to change my life today. Why is it so hard to stick with a change? Like you've got to get relentless here. It's because ego doesn't like change. Ego actually knows everything that's going on. I swear ego is tapped into the infinite universe, is tapped into your soul, knows all your soul timeline, knows literally everything and um, is secretly manipulating you without you realizing it on a regular basis. And that's why you have to constantly get heart centered. You have to get constantly into a silent place of peace and love um, and continue to go with the flow of your heart. <sighs> Understand that there's nothing but time and lots of lifetimes and you're never like, you will always conquer your mission. You'll always accomplish it. You'll always get there. That's part of ego struggle is its relationship with time, its relationship with, with getting it done, its relationship with, with upholding such a high vibrational responsibility. Um, and now it's conflicted because now you're going to have to live up to all these expectations and it's like all this illusionary junk. And it's fear, you know, it's part of that veil that exists here that makes it so hard for us to truly know ourselves. And it's just constantly at a state of resistance, but you just constantly, the best way to work with ego is to say, hey, ego, this is what I have in mind. Hey, ego. So I'm helping you, my client, okay? So you know who this is. <laughs> and I'm showing ego this higher dimensional self that's at the sun. Ego already knows about this. And I'm saying... It's time for you to acknowledge that you're part of a really big purpose. That doesn't mean that you have to be perfect, that you have to be the best, that you have to um, get the job done right and get it done now. I mean, it doesn't mean you have to live up to some kind of potential. All it means is that this is existing and you don't have to be responsible or carry the burden 110% on your shoulders, ego, because you gotta share. You have to share with the other chakras because the other chakras are enlightened beings. They're complete infinite universes of awareness. And ego, you're part of this body, this beautiful body, and you're safe to work with the chakras. You're safe to work with the guides. You're safe to work with the soul. You're safe to work with the higher self. You're safe to work with the sun. You're safe to expand your horizons. Does that help you feel better? Just to remember those truths. Ego uh, says no. Does feel better, but there's more to it than that. So I'm going to go into this face. The sour face. It's not so sour, it's just vulnerable now. And it looks like a black key um, on a piano. Just a black key. And it's showing me that when you tap the key, there's no sound that comes out, that it's broken. I just touch the key. And I realize that this piano is booby trapped. It's full of all kinds of keys that aren't working. It's just full of distractions. I mean, there's hundreds of distractions here. This tells me that you are already in the process of downloading a profound message, uh, profound new energies for your life. <laughs> here on earth from a higher dimension where you're actually in the sun receiving your next mission. Literally, it's what's going on. And I'm called to help your ego with this reality. And your ego is creating all these distractions, which tells me that in the processing of this massive message, um, I mean, it could, 
you could find yourself, I, I don't know what this is going to look like, but it could be a gymnasium. I mean, it could be several years of jumping through weird hoops and going this way and going that way. and But avoiding, 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 avoiding. Just the one thing that you need to do. I don't know what that thing is. <laughs> but me working on this with ego, helping ego to just clear all of these distractions out is going to help you um, access a straight path access more clarity on what the next step is. And this is a spiritual path. This is a enlightened path. This is a this is an activation of your divine purpose path, okay? And this is a star seed path. So this session is is actually going to help your ego um, come into a place of peace and balance with the process, which is going to save you all these distractions. <laughs> Already, I, I'm seeing it all fading out. I say you're going to wear yourself out, ego. Okay, this is a surreal lifetime. This is part of what this is about. It's not easy to get into it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to understand it. All I can say is that to my human mind, it looks like a woman and she's in a world where there's streaks of color and she's walking in extremely slow motion. I mean, it's like a million years for her to take one step, but every single flicker of a millimoment, milla, 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 milla moment, um, the, the, the colors ripple, 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 the colors ripple. And it's just constant, 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 constant forever. And it's just like this, this step never, she never gets her foot into the next step. It's like she's stuck in time. She doesn't feel that way because she can't follow through on the emotion that's related to this moment. It's literally broken down. Time is just broken down to unfathomable unfathomable there's only one other time I've seen time like this and that was uh that was another soul that was trapped in a place that was I mean this is just, it's inconceivable it's a diff totally separate scenario <sighs> okay Th that other soul was actually a part of Archangel Lucifer. And it was just a dimension where he had a single teardrop that never could trickle down his face. And it was so ridiculously dried out there and it was inconceivable time. Inconceivable time. This is not inconceivable time. However, it is a long time. And it's not necessarily sad. Um, it's almost like she has this prosperous motivation, but um, as we're talking about time here, um, and it's, it's slowed down to such a degree, there's, it's like it can't follow through with itself. It never, it never, it never gets to the next step. Never will ever, ever in all of eternity get to the step. It never will. It never will, okay? Just like that teardrop was never ever going to get to fall off. It never will. It was always going to remain there forever. It was the saddest thing I'd ever seen. This, though, is not sad. This is prosperous. However, there's something incorrect about this. This is how my human self can translate this other life. It, it is associated with this image. And all that you are, all your chakras and your blood and your DNA and your ego and everything in here and your soul understands what I'm talking about. It's like I'm telling you it from a dream, um, dream level, so it's like metaphorical and stuff. You'll understand. You're downloading the deeper meaning of this. Even at the conscious level, you're understanding it. But this is how I can describe it to you. Boy, this is going to freak things out. I'm looking at uh, 
how to say that this is complete now. And when I look at what happens when this is complete now, I see how this catapults your um, timelines like ridiculously fast. It's like uh, um, pulling back the slingshot and we're still pulling it back, still pulling it back forever but it's still been pulling back all this time. And so now when we let go, it's like fire, like crazy lightning fast, like insane fast. So it's like, uh, it's pushing everything forward so fast that it, it feels um, like too much to me. <laughs> like there's gotta be a more harmonious, that doesn't feel quite right. So I gotta do something else. I'm gonna step into this actual, I'm gonna step into this place. And see what it's like for me. <clears throat> this is what it looks like on the outside looking in. Oh, they, <clears throat> they're asking me to step into her body. Oh my god. <clears throat> so when I'm in her body, um, there's no relationship with time at all. It's a black, um, it's completely black, and it's a long forgotten place. And there's an, only a single eyeball here. Um, and when I look in this eyeball, I see a really strange little girl and her hair is just kind of, I've seen this face in like horror movies. Like she's got the weird hair and it's like kind of wet. <laughs> all right. Well, she kind of looks like that. She's got like the, all this hair and it's kind of wet and she's kind of like looking at me through this wet hair. But then it echoes back to just a single eyeball and it's a long forgotten space. I mean, this is a long forgotten space. Nobody's been here and I don't know how long. That's, it. that is, I can tell a long time, but inconceivably long. Like I can tell a long time that is unbelievably long. It's, this is it. <sighs> the eyeball doesn't even know what to do. Doesn't even know what to make of this. It kind of spaced out. Like, it just started to stare and it just got lost in a stare for a long time. It's blinking now. Uh, it's very quick to uh, rejuvenate. Uh, Almost like it was in a stasis or something. Even the girl's like quickly circulating back into uh, a rebirth. She's coming into light inside of herself and she's standing up. She looks very happy. Um. This is a sanctuary. Um, the light's coming back into here. As, as she starts to glow with light, this place starts to glow with light. It starts to become full of light in here. I mean, it's getting bright and it's, it's a garden. It's like a very beautiful place. A very healthy place. And this eye is starting to turn into a heart. And she's uh, like a... She's like an all-seeing eye herself. She kind of represents the higher mind or higher chakras. Um, the wisdom. This, 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 it's like the, the all-seeing eye. But she's very full of love. And th that eyeball turns into a heart, but she herself is like this eyeball. She herself is an all-seeing eye. And this whole place is, it's almost like awakening. And it was in a long, long slumber to the point that it, like, it wasn't even registering a heartbeat. It wasn't even registering. It was like it was lost in a stare and it just never blinked. And it just, it just, I guess, timed out or something. <laughs> but time still existed. And it's so weird how, the, how quick things can change like this. Because it's like that never happened. Everything just totally fine. <laughs> just awakened. And she's also somebody, she's a, she's a connected to you. She's connected to your mission. She's connected to your path. She's connected to you. It's kind of like this angel that's also helping you. And um, she's got a fairy-like energy to her, but she shows herself as a child. She doesn't necessarily um, represent your inner child. She continues to more so represent like your third eye and crown chakra, soul star chakra, like higher wisdom um, flowing type energies. But she also is a lot to do with the spirit realm, the spirit of love. 
and um, lots to do with nature and like a, a fairy type energy. And everything's starting to glow and she's tapping into the sun herself. And she's starting to um, alter this energetic dynamic of the woman who cannot make the step and all the light colors that keep changing. She says that that woman will die now, actually, is what she says. And that woman then uh, becomes stone. And all the light colors, um, they're like wisps of light, they disappear. And it's just a dead space now. And then from within this woman, she cracks and then breaks into two pieces. And I see this uh, spirit of this girl um, who carries the heartbeat within her like aura, which is like a golden um, orb of energy. And she's a little tiny little thing, like just a little golden orb comes out of the mind of that woman. And then she's, it's almost like she's choosing to go to the sun. She doesn't necessarily feel like a part of your soul, but a part of your soul family for sure. But she is very closely connected to you and you could even de define her as a guide of some kind. And she, she just knows what to do. Like, it no, like nothing ever happened. That's <laughs> so weird. And she slept for a trillion years. And then she woke up like nothing ever happened. <laughs> I mean, that's what it's like. So weird. Okay. There's, uh, she's, she's definitely headed in that direction. There's some kind of delay. I can't explain this. And there's something else I need to look at. I'm going to check on your ego for a minute. Let's look at the, the sour warhead. <laughs> Not sour. It's like kind of a bluish color. It's, uh, kind of not sad either. It's just kind of neutral, I guess. That's Okay. Ego doesn't know yet. It's kind of in a meditation in a way, which is really great. It's a, definitely a neutral energy right now. It's not afraid or insecure. It's not happy and celebrating. It's just like a neutral energy. I'm just going to go back to the, the sun and uh, go talk to you and see how you're doing. There, There's still an energy... And it's basically just a gap. It's like a, a gap between this this golden fairy little girl reaching um, the part of you that is um, waiting <laughs> in time um, to turn and look at the three races that showed up here. <laughs> so everything's kind of like um, time is in a weird state of multitude of delays. <laughs> like that's literally what it's like. I, f I felt these delays, actually, in my own human life. I mean, I, f I have felt, like, delays that don't make sense. And I have nothing to work with as far as defining what that means in the physical reality. But I can't understand why it's taking so long. That's what it constantly feels like. Like, uh, it shouldn't be taking this long. <laughs> However... Um, there's a delay going on um, in your energy field. And with this process, with this mission, with everything becoming seamlessly connected and working with the balance of your ego so it can all seamlessly come back to you as a human. Okay. Still working on checking on you at the sun. It's like uh, this whole process is like making my nose itch. It's making me, <laughs> I don't know, squirmy, I guess. I'm going to relax more, I suppose. I'm literally just just coming on down, chilling out. Just coming back to my my human senses for a moment, and then I'm gonna reconnect. Okay. Hmm. OK. 
Okay. Okay, this is the inconceivable part. So everything that I've accomplished thus far is um, like point A to point B to point C to point D. This is going to be um, an unbelievable moment because all of those, all of those steps needed to happen. And now everything is, we wash the entire scene and we start over from scratch. <laughs> That's what I'm supposed to do now. I have to let go of the little fairy. I have to let go of the sun. I have to let go of everything we've seen so far. Now I'm going to go to your human self. And I'm just going to relax. I'm going to allow, allow the next uh, image to reveal itself. Your connection with the sun. Your connection with everything that was just discussed. Your connection with these uh, constellations. Your connection with your crown chakra. Your connection with time, whatever. Let's just... Your connection with this angel. All right, open up. Let me see what, what are we working with now. Okay. Again, this is working with the ego. Um, there's, this is a, all an illusion, just so you know, but it's an image of kind of like a purple gremlin and it has an oversized head and lots of spikes on it. And it's carrying like a, like a, a club. Okay. Um, a wooden like cartoon looking club. Okay. <laughs> For beating people with, and it's viciously snarling and it's full of anger and it's just like, uh, it's really angry and it just wants to club things and it just wants to beat things over the head and snarl and be pissed off. It's also got like a punk punk rocker girl um, slash like a King Koopa <laughs> type appearance to it. Like lipstick and all with reptile scales. It's like starting to look more like this. Like a Koopa child. It's all right, already starting to relax and calm down. Just needed to get that out. It was connected between ego and heart. I understand why I had to erase all that stuff because there had to be a bit of a transition between you and what that event is all about. It was you that was creating that strange like rift. It literally was like a strange cloud, black... Um, fog that was developing that was preventing that fairy from getting to um, the you that was downloading the information at the sun in those three races and so for some reason looking at that punk rocker koopa chick helped you and i'm starting to see there's a connection between you and this event and it's just starting to develop as sunlight but it's an orangish colored glow it's starting to develop inside yourself. It's starting to develop around you in your aura. And it's starting to connect you um, to this other you at this other dimensional um, place. This fairy is also going to arrive in her divine time. There feels like a delay, but there really isn't a delay. It's just like she's flying in slow motion. Almost like she's never going to get there, but she is. She's absolutely going to get there. And now suddenly you're catapulted into yourself on the sun. And you're a bit freaked out by it. And that breaks that uh, time loop that you were stuck in. That you said, I can't um, face those three races. Something has to be resolved inside myself. So you just catapulted into the sun version of you. Um, and broke that energy. And now you're like a human at a higher dimension looking around like what the heck is going on here like whoa where am i what your ego is prepared all right your ego is okay with this it it knows it's okay with it you're very human about this you're not as astral um self about it 
I'm like starting to do that thing again. Like I just starting to feel itchy and just like I, I don't know why. It's just part of the process, I guess. Okay. We're just clearing out energy right now, helping get centered with the experience. Remember, there's no rush here. You're afraid to look at the faces. You're really afraid to. Because you don't know if you can cope with anything that doesn't look like yourself. <laughs> and because it's real life. I mean, it's not like a cartoon on the TV. It's actually standing in front of you for real. That's where ego is avoiding. But ego says ego can do this and it is safe. And is actually working with you and not against you, okay? Um, so you can take a look now. It's okay. It's safe. And the fairy is sending um, energy into your higher mind to give you um, courage. And what's interesting is the reason why that fairy, it looks like she's going in slow motion and there's a divine time. It's the time that it takes for you um, to feel safe, to look at things that are inconceivable to your own mind. As you adjust to seeing inconceivable things, um, she will become closer to you because she represents the expansion of your higher mind. Your third eye, your, your crown, your soul, star chakra, your heart, all that stuff. She represents um, the expansion of these chakras. And so she already is in your chakras. It looks this way because it's teaching us that she becomes like... A more of a prominent um, energetic connection as you begin to trust your own psychic gifts and development because it feels like you're going to be introduced to three different races um, and it might be a little bit shocking but they're like your friends like you know who these people are um, so and your ego is working with you and not against you so that's going to make everything so much easier okay All right, your th major headache developing in your third eye. Fairy is still over there in the distance because you, you're you going to have to train. You're going to have to practice. And so you're working these muscles um, for the first time, so to speak. You may have been working them all along, but you're working them. You're raising the bar. You're, make, you're putting heavier weights on. Um, so it's gonna feel a little bit more sh like strain, but you're doing just fine. Like, <sighs> God, this bird girl, she's so weird. What is she like? Like, she's a f I okay. Let's just her ha 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 like ha ha. ha, ha. She's like this, okay? So this is what she sounds like to me. Uh, so, okay. I'm helping you to just look at her. That's all you had to do. Looking at her, it represents you choosing to accept the frequency and um, get to know it. <laughs> and it's like eating something for the first time. It might not taste good, but it actually tastes amazing. You just haven't, um, you're not familiar with the flavor yet. So it, the, you're just adapting to the frequency of who and what she is so you can actually work with her in a more seamless way. It's not uncommon even for me to have a hard time communicating with um, beings that I'm not familiar with at first. I had to kind of adapt to their communication style and then give it a week, give it a couple weeks. And it's like, why was I having such a hard time talking to you before? So it, it can be like this. And so it's just going to feel a little bit difficult right now, but it will quickly and swiftly. It's like the memory is coming back to you. 
You just have to hold it steady. She's uh, opening a, a dimension. And it looks like uh, walking into a doorway, a rounded door, that has a bubble in it. And so you're walking through the iridescent bubble. And I did not expect this. But um, it singes your skin. It's got a singeing hot um, manner about it. And it's activating your heart. It actually, it's like light that touches you. Um, it somehow this light has a singeing effect and it's not actually hurting you. It's um, preparing you. It's activating you. Something like this. But that felt really like instantaneously hot and then like, wow, I just got like a cool upgrade or something. <laughs> She is something with frequency patterns. Super peculiar. Okay, another reason for that singeing, it has to do with, it's like a, a golden lining. You have a golden lining around you now. And it's for energy protection. So that, that way, any communications that are attracted to you have to be transmuted through this golden layer before they reach you. And so it, anything that has to go through the golden layer has to be transformed. So that, that is going to give you that kind of edge that um, you're receiving harmonious information because if anything less than harmonious isn't going to reach you because it has to be transformed by the golden layer before you're even going to be aware of it. That was the point of that. That is one, that is so cool. That's part of your mission to have that. <laughs> you just have this gorgeous, like really ultra bright um, golden lining around you. It feels very natural for you to have this. It's like your natural skin or something. Like you're really used to having that. It's almost like it was repaired. Like, you, you always have that, but you've been going through so much that you're going through this recharge at the sun. And now this is, this is like, um, part of that, uh, cleaning and purifying and recharging process. I mean, this is no doubt, this, a session that is telling you that you're processing a profound event in the energy world and that I am called to prepare you for the processing of that event in your human self. And so when it comes to time, is this uh, something you're going to be working on your whole life? Well, yeah, we're always working on everything our whole life. Um, is this something where some big thing is going to just start to happen all in one day or in one month or in one year? I don't know. Um, all I know is that this is what I'm called to do. I don't know how this translates with human time. But it feels like this event is going on and you're receiving more awareness of the event in your human self with each and every day that passes here forward, okay? You're in another dimension. You're still connected to the sun. Again, it's like you're in a, um, like, like I was saying, it's like you're in your own, like, clothes changing room or something. And it's an interdimensional space. So anybody could walk in at any time, but it just feels like a space for you right now. But it feels like everybody else is here. I don't know. It's like a, a privacy thing. You're just taking a moment to just enjoy the sensations. And just enjoy the sensation of your glowing skin. It, it's be it's wonderful to feel it. It's recharging you. Like, I mean, what is it to recharge you exactly? And you'd think that, that what we saw in the beginning was recharge enough, let alone all the other things. 
<laughs> and now you just got the sun, the, the golden lining. And then that that's still like, you're starting to feel more like yourself because it's recharging you. Like how, how much more recharging do you need? Obviously you're at like a, a totally other level of what energy is about. And you, like you fueling up is like you becoming a blazing hot sun yourself. I can't uh, find that uh, feathered female energy anymore. She's still here, but I don't feel like um, you need to do anything with her at this point. It just it feels like um, she was to help create the gateway and to like do the golden lining thing. There's an angel that is overlooking this whole thing. It's just, it's almost like um, the angel is hearing what God consciousness or love of all or the flow of the universe um, is listening to direction and is beaming the direction into your sensory ability. So at this lower dimension, which is still much higher than this earth plane, um, you can really feel in tune with everything. So there's some kind of angel guide that is helping you to feel in tune with the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. And it's without a question without a question and it's just so it's like so seamless this angel just seems like a conduit of um channeling um direction to you okay the pressure is starting to build up in the third eye again oh this is a uh, this is exhausting this feels more human a human response it feels more like, um, it's not, it's a little ego, not a whole lot. It's just kind of draining on the body. It feels tiring. It feels really tiring. I mean, it's really, it's really pushing you. Really hot on the third eye, really hot in the crown, really hot. Right now I'm just sitting with your human side, your human feelings, and they just feel, I mean, they don't feel sad, they, they don't feel like a yippee, um, hip hip hooray, it's just because you feel tired. So there's just a bit of a draining um, element to it, but that's because there's so much growth going on here. And there's so, so, so much of a transfer between dimensions to your body. And I'm doing a lot of work with ego to allow a lot of information to come into you. So, I mean, it's a, it's a lot on your body. So if you feel tired for a few days after this, the reason is because you're downloading. I mean, you're receiving straight up information and you're going through a major recharge. This is a huge event, but you're also ex going to experience echoes of that here in the, your human body, in the human world. And you're meant to. You're meant to be connected to that. You're meant to know about it. You're meant to feel it. I'm just helping you to kind of your human self recharge. I'm just giving you more energy air, more energy flow into your um, higher chakras so you can feel just a little bit more energized in the process it's so funny you're super energizing in a higher dimension but your body is really kind of getting worn out here on planet earth there's some kind of dragon energy as well a really super wise dragon and this dragon seems to have black scales but um, they um, reflect light so um, exactly that in this like uh, sun place where all this light is flowing, it's um it's reflecting fire is what it looks like, and so it has patches of like orange and, and yellow and gold all over it, 
and it's it's actually a uh, black scales but they're just so like mirror like and they reflect so exactly i mean the scales are extraordinarily gorgeous to look at so they just reflect so much light it's almost like he's glowing this dragon is glowing he uh transforms into a man and he's bringing um more information The fairy is working interdimensionally between the human, the human you and this higher dimensional you. And this higher dimensional you um, and the human you looking through the eyes, because um, you're connected now, looking through the eyes and seeing these other races and seeing the activation and work. I don't know how this is going to translate on Earth, but you're going to feel it. <laughs> So she's playing that role. Stragon has something to do with um, getting you certain... Um, I mean, the angel is guiding. The fairy is supporting the translation and the opening of the higher mind and the translation of seeing through the astral eyes and bringing the, the sight back to the human you. And this dragon is actually a dragon, but it appears like a man now. It's something simple, something that is easier for you to translate. And he seems more like a scholar type energy. But he's really like a super ancient dragon. He's not, uh, he doesn't want to present himself as intimidating or a warrior or a protector, but more like a scholar. But he is a dragon, okay? <laughs> Still uncertain about the purpose of the blue. Um, and the being that all I can tell you is it reminds me of the color blue and then whatever the sort of greenish uh, upside down L-shaped <laughs> um, strange looking being is about with, the, with he was also had a club, I believe. <sighs> yeah, he was kind of I don't know if I if I told you that detail, because I found it very peculiar. Just a minute, because I found him to be rough around the edges. I found him to be um, more slack, more slacked off, <laughs> and I was curious to know what his role was in all of this. But every single one is a distinguished being. <laughs> so I'm looking at them and then my mind translates it like this and then I tell you what it means, okay? I don't feel like I'm called to know more uh, anymore because it's all just getting like, you need a break. <laughs> you need a break. And I can tell because I need a break. I'm just going to come back to myself now. I'm still working on coming back to myself. Still coming back to myself. I was pretty deep in that. Almost back to myself. Almost there. I'm like, I'm so close. <sighs> I'm just feeling my, I'm feeling myself back in my body here. Feeling my body. <laughs> yeah, I'm a normal person again. <sighs> That was just so surreal, out of this world. Thank you so much. What a special, special gift. 
I mean, we just witnessed a super event that is going on in your amazing soul timeline. And something that you're working through here as a human on Earth. And you're like this, I mean, you're a perfect representation of a starseed. All I would do, like, when, whenever I get, whenever I tap into information like this in my own world, I mean, you gotta, you translate it in your own way, okay? I just allow it to just reveal itself to me. Because I understand that when these events are happening, and how does that translate into Earth time? Um, that's why I just let it just reveal itself to me in time. And know that it exists. Know that it is happening. And just continue to allow myself to become aware of more and more and more. And then to even know that I am becoming aware of more. And that I am seeing more. And that I am receiving more. And that I am expanding my higher mind. So to kind of live in that state of awareness and openness um, every day, it, it, you're going to become more and more and more tuned in to what this is about. Even if it's five years from now and a lot of days of, of development, um, this is a real thing and it's pretty cool. It's, it's not pretty cool. It's like super cool. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> I know a lot of people are going to appreciate um, just this experience as well. And we're all a part of this. So you sharing with the public, like we all are receiving an experience with the sun through you. An experience of time, experience of understanding um, about other dimensional selves and how that works. It's, it's even helping our own egos to um, and our own higher minds through your higher mind. Like we're all interconnected. So as you... Um, become harmonized with this we become harmonized <laughs> with our own versions of this it's so cool all right i'm i'm done i said everything i can say <laughs> all right Ugh. thank you all so much for watching if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com I'm also on Patreon. If you're interested in joining my Patreon community, you can do so at patreon.com slash Abby Normals Wisdom Quest. I also have two other YouTube channels. One is Abby Normal and the other is Zodiac Energy Readings. All right. Thank you all again and have a wonderful day.